Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the Fritz Chrysler Victor Jacoby operetta, Apple Blossoms, starring Gordon McRae and his two guests, Dorothy Kirsten and Francis X. Bushman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another big musical hit is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, tonight the lovely Metropolitan Opera soprano Dorothy Kirsten and Francis X. Bushman join me in the romantic operetta Apple Blossoms. As the curtain rises... You are the invited guests at a wedding just about to take place on a large Long Island estate. See who it is, Julie. Yes, Miss Nancy. Nancy, it's almost time to leave for the church. I know, Uncle George. Do you intend to wear a sad face like that to your wedding? Do you expect me to look happy when you're forcing me to marry someone I don't love? But this is a wonderful match. Two charming young people, your steel mills, Phillips coal mines. What could be more ideal? It's a real love match. But, Uncle George... I have your bouquet downstairs made of apple blossoms, just as you asked. Why on earth if you wanted apple blossoms, I'll never know, but you wanted them and you got them. Oh, I don't really care whether I carry apple blossoms or not now. I wanted apple blossoms when I thought I was going to marry Dickie. He told me they were supposed to be very lucky. <laughs> they are. You're lucky to get Phil instead of Dickie. I'll get down and see if the car is ready and you come right down. We've got to hurry. Hurry. Julie, have you ever been in love? Oh, hundreds of times. How do you know? How can you be sure? I've always wondered how a girl can tell when she's in love. I'm sure the nearest I have come is just a mild flirtation. go, Miss Nancy. It would never do to be late for your wedding. No, it would never do to be late for my wedding. Well, Phil, it's all over now. 
You're so right, Uncle George. You signed me to a lifetime sentence. <laughs> How does it feel to be a married man? Well, it's a little early to tell, isn't it? Huh? But as far as I'm concerned, it isn't going to make too much difference. Just what do you mean by that? Well, you see, Uncle George, it's it's like this. Oh, where is the man who is glad to bow to the plan That he give up all of his life to his wife from his wedding day? Why should he try when he can forget with a sigh all his old loves? Ask any man for the truth and he will say I love the girls, girls, girls just the same And being wet cannot kill the flame There is the same old charm in flirtation With a maid half afraid And when she looks at me with a smile I know it's girls who make life worth the while Now I must leave them, forget them, but love them A husband I, little girl, goodbye I love the girls, girls, girls just the same And being wet cannot kill the flame there is the same old charm invitation with a maid and friend. And when she looks at me and with a smile, I know it's girls smile. make life worth the while. Now I must leave them, forget them. My boy, I'm sure you and Nancy will be very happy. Oh, now, Uncle, you think you can be happy when you're married to one girl and in love with another? Hello, Uncle George. Hello, Phil. Well, I think I'll go in the other room, see what all those charming young people are up to myself. Certainly was a lovely wedding. <laughs> I suppose we should join the others, too. After all, it's our wedding party, and we, we ought to try to enjoy it. Nancy, why did you marry me? Uncle George said it was my duty. And, oh, he gave me a lot of reasons. Why'd you marry me? Well, most of the same reasons. <laughs> Except Uncle George had an extra gimmick where I was concerned. He's my guardian. He threatened to have me disinherited. <laughs> Isn't it awful to be rich? Poor people can marry the people they're in love with. Were you in love with someone, too? Well, frankly, yes. A boy named Dickie Stewart. We were engaged. Were, were you in love, too? Hmm. <laughs> A very charming young widow named Ann Merton. Then why didn't you marry her? Uncle George says she wasn't eligible. Oh. Didn't have any steel mills. <laughs> Dickie Stewart didn't have any coal mines. I know what you mean. Is he attractive? Oh, very. How about her? Hmm. Beauty. Real beauty. Well, I certainly wouldn't want to come between you. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I, I don't want to come between you and Stuart, either. Of course, it won't make any difference to me if you want to go on seeing her. It won't? No. Well, I'll say that's doggone broad-minded of you. <laughs> you go ahead and see him if you want to. After all, I don't want you to feel that you're being trapped or anything. You're perfectly free to do as you please. Oh, well, thanks. And so are you.
just a game that two are playing. Love is nothing but a game of chance. For the one who chooses a very often loses. Love is never sure to be romantic. Stewart is inside with the guests. Well, you'd better go right in. And, uh, and uh, Mrs. Merton is asking for you, Mr. Campbell. Well, seems that both our fiancés are here. Shall we join them? By all means. <laughs> Turn with the second act of Apple Blossoms in just a moment. Did you ever see a defense plant on wheels? Well, that's exactly what you do see every time you watch a freight train go by. For railroad transportation is an essential part of all defense industry. Yes, freight cars are just as necessary as the raw materials they gather from the far corners of the country and carry to our defense plants. Locomotives are necessary to move tanks and planes from factory to depot, training camp, and embarkation point. For America cannot produce or use more of anything than can be hauled. That means if our needed for our national defense, railroad carrying capacity must increase right along with it. Since the end of World War II, the railroads have spent a billion dollars a year on their own preparedness program. They have bought hundreds of thousands of new freight cars and locomotives, Tracks, terminals, signals, and shops have been modernized or expanded by this billion-dollar-a-year program. The railroads have increased their efficiency and built up their strength all along the line, and they are continuing to do so. For example, the railroads now have on order more than 154,000 new freight cars, enough to keep the car builders at full capacity for the next 15 months. The railroads' vast improvement and expansion program is an essential part of America's rearmament effort. For there is no way in which the nation's transportation capacity can be expanded so quickly and with such economy of manpower and materials as by adding to the locomotives and freight car fleet of the railroads. Yes, the railroads are truly defense plants on wheels. And in order that they may serve our rearmament and commerce most effectively, it is vital that they have access to the materials they need and a chance to earn adequate revenues for the service they perform. And now here is the second act of Apple Blossoms, starring Gordon McRae and his guest star, Miss Dorothy Kirsten. Nancy. Oh, Phil, thank goodness you're here. Have you forgotten about the masquerade ball we're giving tonight? People will be arriving any minute. Well, I don't have anything but to put on a mask. Say, uh, that's quite a dress you're wearing. Thank you. Were you with, uh, with her all afternoon? 
Yes, I was with her all afternoon. Is she coming tonight? Mm-hmm. She'll be here. How about him? Yes, he's coming. Ought to be quite a party. Come in. Hey, aren't you two ready yet? Oh, hello, Uncle George. Hi hey, there. your guests are beginning to arrive. <laughs> We're coming. Phil, Nancy, my conscience has been bothering me. I don't want to make you two young people unhappy. I'm going to arrange for you to get a divorce, Nancy. A divorce? What? Yes. Then you can marry Dickie and Phil can marry Anne. Well, we don't want to rush into anything like a divorce. No, no, no. That would take a lot of thought, Uncle George. I, I don't approve of divorce. Well, it may be the best thing in this instance. Come on now. we better join the guests. Um, very well. You know, Uncle George, you seem to think that Dickie's the great love in my life. Well, that's what you gave me to understand a few weeks ago. Oh, well, I was a child then. You mean Dickie's becoming like a, a brother to you? Good heavens, no. I haven't used that one since I was in boarding school. <laughs> boarding school? What went on in that boarding school? Well, whenever a boy came to visit us, we had to pretend he was our brother. <laughs> Remember, girls, how many brothers we had in boarding school? <laughs> That you can't fault with any certain man Did you obey or did you go on and play? Why, of course I thought till I hit upon any simple little plan Then down the street, away from home we'd meet Then sad but true, you'd say your brother met you There are hundreds of brothers who'd look strange to their mothers. Every girl must have one or two. Some may have three. For there's many a sister says twas brother who kissed her. But no such place as that kiss belongs in a family. Nancy, what are you doing out here on the balcony? Uncle George, something terrible's happened. What? I've fallen in love with my husband. Well, that's wonderful. But he isn't in love with me. Huh? He's in love with that hideously attractive widow that he's following around there. Mm. See? Through that glass. There he is. Uh, with all those young men in masks, I can't tell one from the other. Oh, Uncle George, remember when you gave the masquerade ball a few years ago? I went as a Spanish senorita and Phil was a toreador. We danced together all that evening. Many years ago at a masquerade Sang a Spanish lover serenade When I heard him sing I knew I loved him but quickly I forgot, as all fair maidens do, the song to his maid, his love to be, and this is the song he sang to me. Commands are the kind that must be obeyed. Our lovers who be happy are under your care. Smile down, keep them ever away from despair. 
Fill in there with the widow. It's Dicky. Dicky? Are you sure? I just saw him take off his mask, and believe me, I couldn't be mistaken about that face. Hmm. <laughs> Why don't you go in and tell him that you don't want to marry him? That you intend to stay married to Phil? I will tell him. It's the only fair and honest thing to do. Now, good luck, my dear. <laughs> Dicky? Dicky? There's something I've got to tell you. I can't go on any longer like this. I thought I was in love with you, but I'm not. I'm in love with my husband. This is goodbye, Dickie. And I... I do hope I haven't hurt you too much. Nancy. Well, now, Dickie, I think you've been given your walking papers. So walk. I'm not Dickie. I'm Phil. Well, well. Now, what do you know about that? Uh, did Nancy... Nancy thought I was Dickie. Uh, and she told me she wanted to break it off with me, that she was in love with her husband. Uh, Uncle George, she's in love with her husband. She's in love with me. <laughs> she spoke to me of love with words I prize all else above. Yet hardly I believe my senses now. For that the past she made. Happy as man could be, she's divine, she's mine. Now at last I discover that I am her lover. There's nothing can keep us apart, for I know she's the girl of my heart. I'm sure Nancy would enjoy hearing that. Careful, Uncle George. Here's Nancy now. Uncle George, I can't find Phil any place. <laughs> Take off your mask, Dickie. You devil, you. Phil! Nancy, darling. Oh, Phil, was it you I just, I just spoke to? Yes, darling, it was. Why didn't you say so? You never gave me a chance. And I was very glad you didn't when I heard you say you were in love with your husband. Because by a, a very strange coincidence, I happen to be madly in love with my wife. Oh, Phil. Well, if you two will excuse me, and I'm sure that you will, I'll go see how Dickie and Anne are making out. Because just between you and me and the lamppost, 
They've been dancing together all evening. <laughs> Phil. Oh, Phil. The apple blossoms turned out to be lucky after all, didn't they? Lucky? Lucky for both of us. back in just a moment. And thanks to Francis X. Bushman, Isabel Jewell, and our entire company. Apple Blossoms with book and lyrics by William Lee Barron and music by Fritz Chrysler and Victor Jacoby was adapted for radio by Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Today, as America's rearmament program gains momentum, the need for railroad transportation increases. To meet that demand, the railroads are energetically working to improve and expand every part of their operation. Again this year, just as they have for the past five years, the railroads are spending another billion dollars of their own money toward the end that there will be no limit or delay in the movement of the men and material required for our national defense. And now here again is lovely Dorothy Kirsten. Dorothy, thanks for a wonderful performance in Apple Blossoms. You know, there's no one we'd rather have around here in the springtime, or as a matter of fact, any time. <laughs> Thank you, Gordon. But you know, I did this show with you last spring, too, and I've been wondering whether those apple trees don't ever bear fruit. Oh, sure. A couple of years later, Phil and Nancy have a son, and they name him Jonathan, and they live in a rainy climate. <laughs> so they, uh, they all wear Macintoshes. Oh! <laughs> Northern spies tell me that next week on the Railroad Hour, you're doing the fortune teller with Nadine Connor as your guest. Think of an answer for that, you big apple polisher. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dorothy, you've got me there. You're right about the fortune teller, and we hope all our friends will be listening. And the only other thing that I can say is that you were delicious tonight. Wow! Good night, Daddy. Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Apple Blossoms was presented by Special Arrangement with Tam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can currently be seen starring in Warner Brothers' West Point story. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Hear Eleanor Steber on the voice of Firestone. It's on NBC. NBC.